Great, so I'll uh, put on my, my hat as uh, the president of the Romania Green Building Council. Great, I, I wanted to start kind of just with a little story of, of uh, some of the earlier days. This was about five years ago. Uh, my colleagues and I in the, in the office, we were trying to do a green construction, and everyone knows what we're doing here. Uh, this was an existing building. It was basically used as storage. And uh, when we did it, we started to ask, uh, what, you know, how can we do this green? And we, we wanted to really come up with a, a really nice green building. Uh, this is the end result. Uh, but what's a little hard to see in, in all of this is, is, I think it was a little bit of a compromise in that we did get some good solutions, but even things like eco paint, uh, uh, more sustainable flooring, uh, we, really, we really struggled to find. And while we struggled to find this, we asked a lot of people. We were, of course, pushing the, the suppliers and said, you know, what about green building? What about ecological uh, considerations, energy efficiency considerations? And they all told me, uh, well, nobody cares about green in Romania. And developers don't care about green. Construction companies don't care about green. Nobody cares about green in Romania. However, they did add one thing. They said, oh, I care about green, but nobody else cares about green. And I'd said, I used to say before we had 400 of these conversations, but now we've probably had 1,000 conversations that, said, that tell me you're crazy, nobody cares about green in Romania, only me and my cousin who's thinking about doing some uh, solar thermal water installation. That's, that's the reality. So we found we had fragmented interest. And what, what we did was we put together the predecessor of this event in, in, in Bucharest, and we really brought together, it's, it's a long story, but I'll shorten it, we brought together everybody in events similar, similar like this. And this is the, uh, the meeting of the founding members in uh, an info session for potential founding members in Bucharest. This is the same in Cluj, Napoca. And this is our launch event in uh, October 2008. We had uh, 200, 200, 250 people uh, in the room for this. And so what we said is, we re I think we gave people a, a feeling that they're not alone and that there was to beginning to be a voice for green builders. And so for my talk today, there's a short introduction of, of the Road GBC, uh, talk about the, the availability of green building solutions, legislation, what's the status of green buildings in Romania, uh, talk of course about the small buildings and the do-it-yourself market, 90% of the buildings in Romania are small buildings, and I'm sure this is uh, a very similar situation in many countries, and of course future opportunities and challenges. So basically, we're an, an association of businesses uh, uh, encouraging market legislative and educational conditions to promote high performance construction uh, that is both uh, sustainable and profitable, which I think is similar to most of the, of the orientations of, of all of the Green Building Councils. Uh, this is our founding members. And we had, I think what's interesting, we had a mix of international companies we had, uh, uh, for, with expats leading, we had a, a mix of international companies led by Romanians, and we had a, mix, a group of Romanian companies, uh, entrepreneurs doing business in Romania. So it really was uh, uh, both a local and, and international issue, or, uh, initiative. Uh, interestingly, these, these are some investors. We have eight investors uh, that are really uh, quite prominent in the market and have really started to make serious commitments to green. These, these are our members, and I'd say, for every member, I have about five times as many conversations going on with people that are interested in the subject. We also have the hotels of Romania, uh, Marriott, Hilton, and Crown Plaza. And what's interesting now in this slow time for construction, they're all renovating. As being a five-star hotel, they have to renovate. And we've pushed with them to do green, and they're introducing it. And this is actually one of the uh, more significant uh, forces in Romania right now, and we've just added another hotel group of nine hotels, Anna Hotels, joining this effort, uh, and, and they're, they're part of Hilton, uh, are, are owners of Hilton and Crown Plaza, and they've expanded this. We as a Green Building Council, of course, uh, do training. We've done about uh, training for a thousand people so far. Uh, we've, we have a Romania Green Building Professional Certification, which is basically focused on core skills uh, it's 10 courses, it's to provide more certainty to the market about the professionals that they work with, and it's uh, designed to be low cost. I won't go through all these, but just, just a few 
courses, and this is all available on our website, uh, green design principles, uh, sustainable materials, uh, facilities management, the IT tools of green design. Uh, we have quite, quite a, a good selection. Uh, we recently opened a, a green uh, innovation center. And what this is, is to provide a physical space for people to, to interact and uh, focus. This will be up and running in full in uh, one month from now. And uh, this will be uh, to provide entrepreneurs uh, with a place. This is, this is the opening here. But to provide up entrepreneurs with fully serviced offices uh, to develop their green, green building and green tech businesses. It's very central. We also are a point of reference for the media in Romania. I think they've done an excellent job of realizing the importance both of the environmental uh, issue itself, but also green building within. They're, they're, they do provide us, uh, let's say, quite a bit of visibility with, with a lot of interviews. Uh, this is uh, uh, one, one of, of quite a few television shows that either our council or our members are a part of. Uh, this is a, a leading English uh, uh, speaking uh, magazine, and of course with plenty in the Romania uh, uh, language realm. We partner with WWF. We had uh, sustainable construction is one of their uh, important areas uh, for this uh, for for this year and, and actually in years past. Uh, this is uh, my colleague David Clark with Kundal Engineering uh, delivering. Uh, via the, the, the new Romania Association of Facilities Managers, uh, a presentation on the future of facilities management. This was very well attended. Uh, and, the, and the founders of that, including my, my colleague uh, Tudor Tritza here, is one of the, the founding members, uh, for, founding board members of the Romania Green Building Council, are very interested in, in making sure the green theme is included in facilities management. Uh, when we talk about the availability of green building solutions, uh, I, I hate to say it, but, but really we have to talk about our membership because I think this is really the, the, the main place where they, where they form. I, I think a real measure of success is when all green doesn't come through our organization and it just happens. But right now we have a good selection. Uh, these are some of our more prominent members. Uh, and, and these are all available, of course, on our website, so I won't, won't go through. But important point here is we do, we're starting to have a, a comprehensive uh, a group of 75 companies that can deliver in Romania uh, green building solutions. So going back, this is the same building, the, this was the storage space that we converted. What we have now, just a few weeks ago, we had uh, a workshop from one of our members filled uh, talking about sustainable, uh, sustainable coatings, sustainable materials. And this was, I think, a very interesting uh, uh, a course, and this, this was uh, quite different than where we were five years ago. Uh, we also found a very sophisticated solution. I'm sure the engineers and many architects, uh, solution fires around, recognize what this is to, to test our building envelope. Uh, this is, we were trying to find, everyone knows what this means in uh, green building. This is not a good sign but we are gonna fix this. We're, we're doing a renovation of, our, of this same office building to put it as the top one percentile of existing uh, office renovations. And it's actually a building that's very typical in Romania. So we want to, to prove through this. Uh, we'll talk about legislation and uh, this, this is detailed in more, again, on our website as far as uh, a lot of the applications, both at the European level and at the Romanian, Romanian level. So I'll give just, uh, just kind of a, 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 a brief touching on this. It's uh, energy efficiency. The energy service directive applies to Romania, uh, pushing for a 4.5% uh, uh, by 2010 and a 13.5% reduced consumption. And this, uh, some of the more prominent legislation I'll talk about in more detail is, of course, the energy performance for buildings directive, uh, low energy consumption of, of equipment used in buildings, eco design, uh, and uh, energy labeling directives, and, and importantly, the recast of EPVD, the strengthening of EPVD. So this again is familiar. Uh, this is in force in Romania since January 2007. This is reality. This, this has, the, uh, Romania is subject to this for all new construction. Uh, existing construction is uh, in, in place. Uh, there is a, was some concern about the availability 
of energy auditors, and I think that's a potential problem, but the reality, when we did our, I showed you the thermal imaging, that's a full energy audit of our own building, we had no problem getting somebody who was professional uh, to, to put a low-cost offer to put that all together. So I think that should not be considered a barrier, uh, but, it, but with all of the other legislation, it will become a barrier. So it, in a way, I think it's, it, it's an opportunity for the future. Uh, the energy certificates in Romania required, uh, and probably similar to many, many countries, uh, when it's constructed, sold, or rented. There is incentives, multi-annual program for uh, uh, renovating the existing blocks. As uh, we heard from this morning, this is a, obviously a very significant problem. Uh, I would say in Central Eastern Europe, but really uh, in many places around the world, this is really, uh, th this is really a common challenge. Uh, we have a national program for increasing energy efficiency and renewable energy. Uh, the eco design uh, for energy, uh, regulations uh, regard to minimum standards for HVAC or heating, ventilating, air conditioning, and of course the phase out of incandescent bulbs. Green public procurement, both voluntary and mandatory. Uh, the, the energy inefficient bulbs is 100% mandatory that they, they move to better solution. Uh, 9% voluntary target for building materials, 11% voluntary target for furniture and manufactured goods. And we have the eco-label for products. Uh, we have been invited by the interministerial work group to discuss the European decision related to extending this eco-label to buildings, and we've been uh, discussing with that. Uh, and also, a, th there's some available financing for companies that want to obtain the eco-label for their, their product. This is actually, uh, on the left is Adriana Tsikau, uh, and, and on the right is a colleague, Florian Dobrescu. Adriana Tsikau is a member of European Parliament and actually a critical player in this uh, recast of the Energy Performance for Buildings Directive. She was the repertoire for uh, uh, European Parliament. Uh, and so we went there uh, along uh, uh, with other Green Building Councils to lobby for uh, a, a strengthened Energy Performance for Buildings Directive. The major changes, this was passed, of course, we have, uh, with all legislation, we have to keep up the pressure to, to, to keep it there. Uh, 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 abolished was the 1,000 square meter threshold, uh, and now uh, it, it moves beyond only major renovations and, and brings down uh, uh, more of a component-related uh, aspect to the, the renovations and, and whether that they are subject to the Energy Performance for Buildings Directive. And of course, all new buildings, many have heard, must be nearly zero, which we're going to be working to make sure that means something uh, by December 2020, and of course, public buildings uh, by 2018. And I, I think what's really interesting, it's a six-year architectural program in Romania. So really, the people in school today uh, will not be able to build on the public sector and then shortly after with, with the current curri curriculum. And the, the academi academia of, of Romania is interested in green building and, and we're doing what we can to work with them to uh, really upgrade uh, the, the, the curriculum to, to build the, the, the buildings of the future. Uh, a government decision on green investment scheme. Uh, this is basically uh, selling some of the remaining Kyoto credits uh, and then putting those into uh, the construction sector and green buildings. Let's talk about the status of, of some of the green buildings in Romania. And I have to say, I'm always very happy when I'm surprised by a green building. I, I don't want to be, I don't want it to have to know about it. Uh, and and it's, it's great to hear that this stuff is going on uh, throughout. Uh, Prologis uh, scored 100 out of 100 on their energy audit. Procter & Gamble is making uh, the greenest manufacturing facility in the world will be of, of their uh, business will be in Orlats, Romania. Baumax uh, opened a, uh, one, a flagship retail, a green retail store uh, using natural daylighting, geothermal, uh, smart building technology uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, serve as a model. Willbook, in partnership with Baran, is doing a LEED certified uh, building in the north of Bucharest. Aquarius Group uh, partnering uh, on 100,000 square meters of a mixed-use Briam building. Nokia is a, a lead gold manufacturing facility in the Transylvania area. 
Cascade Group opened a green building just uh, a few months ago, and uh, uh, AIG Lincoln as well. Both, both are uh, uh, BREEAM rated buildings. This is the US Embassy. Uh, we, we participated in a discussion with them to talk about the building, and we ended up selling out uh, two sessions to discuss the building. This will be a lead uh, rated building. All US buildings in the future are subject uh, to uh, obtaining this green, green standard, and the US Embassy is no exception. Talking about the small buildings, and this is, again, incredibly important for Romania, because this is really, as we all know, the, the big buildings get the press, but the reality is, what do we do with all of these very small problems that, uh, that really need to be addressed? And what I thought I would do is, uh, there's a lot of things we could talk about, initiatives that we're doing to reach the end consumer, but I thought I'd just give you a little sense of what what beyond the big project developers do consumers think? What do, what do people that we, we, we've started to talk to, and this is with the help of EcoSemnel, uh, a, a website, and I have to be the first to admit this is a, this is a, a green-minded audience. Uh, but it is, and it is, a, let's say, still a niche topic. But I think it's important because uh, we, we do get some good answers and some, some feedback. Uh, what is your level of awareness and uh, we see 63% have considered it, 30% uh, not, not aware. Of course, the interesting question, how much would you be willing to pay? 50% uh, would pay a 10% premium. And I think we all know this could easily uh, uh, be uh, absorbed by the, the low energy cost across uh, uh, the, the life of the building. We're, we're working on a, a green mortgage program similar to many places, and the, the banking industry in Romania is very interested. They have had, let's say, their hands full the last year and a half or so, uh, but the interest now that now things are settling down and we're looking for a path forward, they're very interested in uh, a green mortgage, and uh, th this will make this, I think, a very easy decision. What green products would you, would you buy this, I think, testifies that uh, thermal insulation is understood to be beneficial, but is just not that exciting. I think it's, it's an excellent investment, uh, but of course people can't see it. And when, you, when reporters come to our building and I'm trying to show them the insulation uh, in, in some areas, they're, they're, it's not a very exciting, exciting moment uh, for them. But it, yeah, it's, a, it's important. Of course, the, the short payback period of, of CFLs is understood. Uh, and, and this is uh, uh, becoming quite a, an easier decision in Romania from before. We're starting to see less and less incandescence. Uh, solar panels, uh, I have to admit, we, didn't, we, we should have broke down photovoltaic and, and solar water. We did not, uh, but I, I, and I suspect it's probably more photovoltaic, but uh, there is an interest there. And uh, energy efficient appliances. So, so quite a, uh, I'd say, I think they're going right after the low-hanging fruit. Which, which, is, which is great because we'll have some, some quick wins and, and good stories to tell. Uh, we've already had neighbors to us start renovating based on what we were doing. So I think this, the same thing is going to happen uh, uh, throughout as, as stories of lower energy bills and uh, nicer living conditions start to spread. So future opportunities and challenges. Uh, there's, there's a lot to talk about here, uh, but I think really knowledge sharing uh, both going forward uh, uh, from some of the local capabilities, but also mixing with both some of the best international ideas. I'm originally from California, and I can tell you it's a, obviously a very innovative place, but at the same time, it's very open to innovation from everywhere else. I think we're very good at taking innovation from Japan, Germany. Uh, we have uh, technology being provided by a coder in India, and we put it all together. And I think this is really the way we, we need to look at this in Romania, that it's not about a bunch of businesses coming in, but it's really a two-way street and, and some local innovation happening and some very interesting opportunities. Uh, pilot projects, we are strong believers that uh, we, we need to stop talking about green building, and I think we've gotten people interested in it, but they want to start seeing this. So really, we're, this year we're putting a big focus of course, with our own renovation I mentioned, but also some exemplary buildings uh, in the very near future. Renovations and, and do-it-yourself. Uh, we're, we're partnering to, to make sure that we educate uh, on the benefits 
of this, and I think this is, uh, this is really starting to take off. Uh, some, of the, some of our partner companies have in-store energy efficiency experts now. And before it was just a, a regular team, and, and I can promise you the, the answer if you asked anything about energy efficiency was I don't know and nobody's ever asked me. Now they actually have trained energy efficiency experts in, uh, in multiple locations. Uh, sustainable construction materials. I think this is both bringing them to Romania and also producing them in Romania and making sure that the innovators of these materials uh, are compensated, but, at, but also, as we know, in green buildings, that production has to move to be more local and closer to the building site. So this creates, I think, a really interesting opportunity. Uh, and, and from recycled to cradle to cradle, and I think I probably owe, to, owe a trademark indication there as well, but basically really moving from uh, the, the basics of, of, of doing some things that are better than before, but not really transformative, as Scott had mentioned before, but really aiming to, uh, now that we have this opportunity, uh, can we in, that, in this region and in, in Romania really come up with a very uh, high-end solution and, and really transformative buildings and processes and everything that goes together. Uh, challenges, I think uh, awareness is growing and there's a lot of people excited, but really us communicating the benefits of, of green buildings is a tremendous challenge. Uh, legislative progress. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, in my opening comments, uh, we have European legislation, we have a post-Copenhagen uh, post framework, we have uh, local implementation of national measures, we have quite a few challenges in legislation that we have to work on. And uh, I think it's, it's incredibly important that we have both a bottom-up and a top-down approach, and, I, and I, I forget which one of my colleagues mentioned it in our internal meeting, but he talked about a sandwich kind of pushing from both directions, and I think this will help uh, both uh, help Romania legislation support uh, green buildings and energy efficiency. Uh, and then, of course, uh, training for integrated design. The, the way we designed our program, we designed it so that really people of all disciplines can, can go into it, and some would be challenged in one subject, uh, while quite comfortable in another, but everyone would get to understand what the other pieces have to do in this project. And I, th I think we all can appreciate that's an important part of, of coming up with a successful green building. But this is, that's not an easy job in, in any country, and, and certainly in Romania we have a, a big challenge ahead of us, but uh, we, we will do what we can. That is what I have. Thank you very much. And I will turn it over now to Imola Fry from Hungary. Thanks.